let's talk about wildfires. First, let's know how they are formed. Usually, they are by human beings, but not most of the time, because sometimes it could be thunderstorms when lightning hits the ground, cut, cuts some trees that are very flammable, and then it turns into a whole forest fire. Hello guys! Hi! Welcome to our channel. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about natural disasters. So, natural disasters could come in multiple forms. It is so-called nature's revenge. So, natural disasters, as I said, can come in multiple forms. The small baby one, which humans can survive, which we call weather, which is raining, sunny, so many others. Then there's like the hard ones, the ones which are kind of painful to human life. Like let's say tornadoes. And then there's the hard ones, which are just meant to kill humans, like volcanic tornadoes and firestorms and some others. So yeah, there's a lot of different types of natures revenge for those others out there so yeah nature hates us and he makes his revenge in the worst way possible so today we will be talking about the extreme forms of nature's revenge called natural disasters each one causes billions of dollars to fix and we'll be talking about them proudly and we hope they won't happen to you we hope so now let's start with our first one on the list there is the tornado as you can see on the screen this is a tornado so the tornado is a very weird one it first starts from a cloud which most people don't know and it's a specific type of cloud from a thunderstorm which is formed by many clouds coming together and it's called a supercell and now this specific cloud, only this cloud, will start having some cold air come in like this and some hot air getting pushed up like that, which is not good. And it will start making a circular rotation. And this circular rotation will be going for, let's say, hours on end. And once it's kind of big enough, it starts making a small circular vortex start coming from the bottom of the cloud slowly becoming bigger, bigger, and taller until the point it reaches the ground. And then it finally separates from its cloud, deforming it from its normal size and going to destroy anything in its path. A few have seen a cloud, a few have felt the winds, a few have been in them, and it's not a very nice sight or feeling to be in. So, yeah, tornadoes, they're bad. And now on to our next one. There are earthquakes. So, earthquakes are like when the ground like breaks apart. Tectonic plates, which are part of our crust, which is kind of on top one of our earth layers. You should watch our earth layers video. And, yeah, so the... It's one of the layers of the earth near the titanic plates, which make them split apart when there's like some heat going on down there. And then they split apart. Then the ground starts breaking in the middle of them. This is not a sickle. This is an earthquake. You are two different things and we'll speak about both of them. But they kind of seem like the same. But they're different, okay? Just like how people think tornadoes and hurricanes are the same. So they're not. And now continuing, then the earthquake breaks the land between, making a huge gap in the in between the two parts of land. And then this gap is called an earthquake. And this earthquake it breaks apart, breaks. And this tectonic movement is called an earthquake. And it destroys a lot of things. A lot of things fall into it. A lot of things which are on top of it get broken apart. And it causes millions of dollars, if not billions, to fix everything which got destroyed by it. 
So yeah, it's literally taking out our budget. And they're also very bad killers. Falling into one is not a very smart idea, let me tell you that. And by the way, the Grim Reaper is happy enough to have everyone here and living with him. But I guess you want to finish this video before making the stupid decision to walk into their home. And if you're lucky enough, don't. <laughs> and now going on to our next one. Firestorms and also a lot of other fire stuff. So let's talk about wildfires. First, let's know how they are formed. Usually they are by human beings, but not most of the time, because sometimes it could be thunderstorms when lightning hits the ground, cut, touch some trees that are very flammable, and then it turns into a whole forest fire. Or it's a stupid human who poured some fire liquid, some flammable liquid, onto the ground and left without thinking of extinguishing anything. And then the world started burning. Yay! So, is there anywhere to prevent this? Don't go to the forest, Brian. Don't go to the forest. And if you can, avoid camping. These are the three ways to never find yourself in a forest fire. And also, there's some firestorms. The sun sometimes makes a thunderstorm. And I said sometimes because we're talking about firestorm. So the sun, when it makes a thunderstorm, gives the amount of heat that it could use to make a cloud. And if the cloud is big enough, it could make a cloud which will be able to remove a lot of lightning if not rain so yeah the heat and the cold air needs to come all together to make a big cloud which will be able to remove some good old rain so yeah the sun makes thunderstorms with some cold air coming from the ground so can the fire do the same yes it can and this is going to be how a firestorm starts so it uses it can give the same heat which will combine with the cold air which will make clouds and these formed clouds could make the thunder and lightning which come from them can make a bigger firestorm and the bigger the fire the more longer the storm stays and not like how storms could like go out randomly this one you need to extinguish it out and if the clouds are still there like still raining and one streak of lightning comes down it still means this fire could come back so yeah it's very hard to prevent and a forest also one of these forest fire storm thingies are also very rare too and don't really happen much. So you're also kind of lucky to be away from them. By the way, I guess living in your home is an advantage, right? So yeah, we have told you about fire, as you can see. Now, what about the ocean, eh? Most people who live in islands will be afraid of the stuff we can tell you that the water can do to humans. So yeah, you live on an island, go out of the video. But first, like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell before you leave the video in shock and pain. So now let's start with flash floods. There's a lot different types of floods, but flash floods are the ones I'd like to personally talk about because they're the ones which usually are reported on the news. So yeah. Let's start talking about flash floods. Flash floods are very fast, rapid floods which destroy anything in their way, making the sea level rise, not only rise to like a small kind of part, which is kind of the same with the road. No, I mean like rise up to the same size as the of this Empire State Building kind of rise. So, yeah, it could become like the size of some skyscrapers. Ah, uh, not so bad. 
It could drown the skyscrapers. If not, break them apart. So, yeah. Flash floods could be bad, but I mean, that's not scary. What's worse? Like, you're telling me that I'll run in pain from this video. I guess here it comes. So, right now we're going to be talking about tsunamis. Tsunamis are like the more intensified version of their small little brother who is named Flash Flood and Flood. So, yeah, tsunamis are worse, much worse. They could come in multiple different sizes and they're also very, very big waves, big waves. And even when I said like multiple different sizes, I don't mean like they could be baby small. No, they are called big waves for a reason. When I mean like small, medium, and big, is by the intensity. Because each one has their own worst scale. And the more intense it is, the more worse the damage is. And it comes from the water to land. <laughs> Most of the stuff that the ocean does, which affects land, is usually a natural disaster. So yeah, it comes, affects land. It comes bringing up some of the water, coming up with some dead fish, and goes all the way, making its way to the island, or your island, or your country. And then it goes, attacks. Once it slams onto the place then a bigger wave will come after it it's just taking more waves or more ocean into it making a big wave you guys know how like in beaches the you can see waves coming yeah these waves are kind of the same with tsunamis just bigger stronger and more worse so yeah how to avoid this stuff you can't it's that simple you can't. They happen every time. And they're less predictable than they seem. But if you see some like small tides happening and it isn't a beach, you should, once it looks a little big, you should evacuate as fast as you can. Because these stuff are quick, these stuff are fast. They might take some hours to form, but they are fast in destroying just like flash floods. And that's why flash floods are called the flash. They aren't really called that. They're called flash floods because they're fast. But yeah, I like calling them the flash water because they're the flash. And now going to our next one, which is avalanches. So we talked about the ocean. Why don't we talk about the frozen ocean? So the avalanche, not like movies and Hollywood wants to tell you, it doesn't start by people screaming. It maybe the mountain is angry that you're screaming at it for no reason. Just think about it. You're minding your own business, just being a mountain on a lane, and someone starts screaming at you. You want to burst, don't you? And that's an avalanche. But just letting you know, that's not how al avalanches start. Avalanches start by human explosives, skiing, and many other reasons. Usually, avalanches are not started naturally. They are started by human beings doing some crazy stuff in Antarctica and other places. And what is the sad thing, you may ask? So the sad thing about avalanches is that they happen every day and there's no way of preventing it than like not going to an icy place. So yeah, avalanches happen every day around the earth, except places which don't have ice. And yeah, they do a lot of damage. And let's say as long as you live in a mountainy area in snow, you are very, very you should be acknowledging the fact that at any moment you could hear rumbling down near your house, rumbling down, and then your house gets overthrown by a bunch of ice. So you should be aware and cautious of this thing coming to your home because your son scram at it because it can't happen. This was all getting filmed at Hollywood. <laughs> so, yeah. In Hollywood, you scream, 
an avalanche that in real life don't shoot a gun while skiing while bombing something <laughs> or it is that a uh, mega avalanche because <laughs> those are like three reasons why humans start avalanches so yeah avalanches happen every day you can't avoid them except you're not in a mountainy area in ice which has an advantage to a lot of avalanches then you're good you're good at least so now let's talk about something related to ice it's called a brinicle so these brinicles are like tornadoes or hurricanes more exactly underwater made of ice you might be thinking sir you have lost your mind that can happen well this happens in places like wells antarctica of course so let's show you how it works it goes like this ice spins around like a form of a hurricane it slowly freezes freezes instant freeze once it touches the ground like a tornado but this time it's an icy tornado when it touches the ground it freezes everything in its path including starfish which is kind of sad because in because there has been many films showing this also sea urchins and a few other sad unlikely stuff would get in its way and yeah wouldn't it be funny if you saw a crab grave died of brinicle it, it sounds like brad <laughs> and that's why he died so yeah he died of ice that's literally how those animals die of ice as stupid as it seems a few of them unlucky die so yeah it's very sad for to see some starfish grouping up having a meeting and then die of some icicle in the ocean which is a tornado so some that couldn't enter this list are hurricanes, lightning, ball lightning, and a few others like lava, tectonic plates, sinkholes, and a bunch of others. Like many different types of rain. Black rain, which is caused by humans. Blood rain, which is caused by algae. And acid rain, humans again. Humans stop this. So, yeah. Now, here's the number one most worst one on our list. <sighs> volcanic cool. lava, lava things. So, yeah, volcanic tornadoes, they exist. And they are, as their name sounds, they start from a volcanic eruption, then become spinning air. You guys know, like, that gas which comes, like, when something's burning, right? Yeah. It starts spinning around with the same technique, this time no cloud. And then, yeah, it makes some kind of tornado on top of lava. <laughs> and then it goes spinning around. It's just like a normal tornado who this time spawned on top of lava. And now it's still attacking humans. <laughs> and it's kind of a weird sound, this name for it. It doesn't really have anything related to lava than being in lava. But yeah, that's how it works. Starts in lava, goes to land, ends on land. And then the cycle goes again. And it's also very rare too. Almost like ball lightning. Both of them are very rare to see. Also very dangerous to be in. So yeah, volcanic tornadoes are made straight from hell with love. And now let's talk about one more to finish off this video ball lightning just like kinder said ball lightning is very dangerous there's many theories on how this could be formed and let me tell you the theory, the most best theory that science that people have came up with which is it's aliens aliens have come from mars and come to earth it's aliens it's definitely aliens amazing it's aliens they 
have disrupted how our lightning works, made them circles, and now are spreading them <laughs> onto Earth, making them more times the deadly. It is aliens. They are doing this straight from Mars. I knew it. It's got to be them. They did everything which happens to our Earth. Not like us humans or nature is doing this. It's the aliens up above us. <laughs> But since we're not allowed to lie on this channel, we're going to tell you the actual leading one, which has nothing to do with aliens. Thank you. So, it starts with, a with rain, then lightning. How does the ball of lightning start? So, it starts when it happens on the mountain, which has different type of ores that are attracted to lightning. So when it makes lightning, it makes a giant fused ball, ball of lightning, which suddenly strikes the ground. It has nothing to do with aliens. Okay, so aliens did nothing in this case. People think it's aliens. <coughs> aliens do nothing. They probably don't even exist. And that's why you should never listen to a theorist or a crazy therapist in your life. Hope you guys like and subscribe. Please ring the notification bell and sub and subscribe to watch more of our videos. We really enjoy you guys' time and company. Please share this video to your friends and loved ones so they probably won't catch themselves in such kind of problems. And bye guys and have a happy day.